Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be painting up the Psychophage from uh, the Tyranids from the Leviathan box set. Now I've assembled it up to the point where we get in the way of painting. Basically the whole body is together and all of its legs are separate. Now there are some really ugly mold lines on this and I try my best to fix it. So I take some uh, Milliput and I fill in the edges and stuff. But I didn't do too good of a job on the back end. On the front end where the chitin is, I did a much better job. Yeah. Alright, I primed the model using a, well, a car primer. This one's an ultra matte black that works with plastic. And I didn't do any pre-coating this time. I'm trying to find a faster way to paint the Tyranids. And so this one has some unique stuff, but... Uh, so I essentially went straight up with Pallid Witch Flesh and I just airbrushed it on all the limbs and the parts that are going to be the skin and base layer for the tentacles in the front of the mouth and such. Alright, now with Xerxes Purple, Gene Sealer Purple, and Emperor's Children, we're going to paint the Chitin, or the armored plate. So we're going to start off by covering all of them with Xerxes Purple as a base coat. And then, we're going to be using water for our dilution entirely. So with Gene Sealer Purple, I apply this on pretty much 80-90% to 90 of all the plates, with uh, just covering the edges, towards the edges and such. And the, I don't know what the, how to describe these, the billowing smoke things along the edges and the more raised areas so the recesses still have the Xerxes purple plainly visible. Then I move on to Emperor's Children. Now this is watered down a bit, so basically I paint the edges of all the plates, uh, essentially, and then I just feather in like lines all the, uh, going into the back or the edges of the chitin. And I just keep doing that. Now because it's thinned down with water, it's a bit uneven and random. Uh, but because it's also a bit translucent, I go over some of the same spots again and again, here and there, and that, like, thickens the color. And so, like, I essentially go over some places a few times, and that strengthens the color. And, yeah. And so, as far as the billowing smoke cloud thingies that are on his back, I paint the edges, the sharp edges, and then I just feather in some straight lines here and there. Uh, this is more of an artistic thing. It's a bit hard to describe, but... Essentially, the feathering goes to all the edges. Yeah, pretty much. Alright, with uh, this orange and this yellow, <laughs> essentially oil paints, I make a wash where it's a bit of orange, a bit of yellow, uh, and it's very thin. So there's a lot more mineral spirits and there's oil paint. I want this to be a very thin wash, and I apply it all over the white skin. And then I do a quick wipe with a, whatchamacallit, a makeup sponge after it's dried a bit. Uh, this is, I noticed that the color is a little bit off, it's an off-white in some areas, and so I use this to kind of help that. go back with some Emperor's Children and I paint the joints and whatever the heck these things are. Alright, with magenta and black, a little bit of black because it's very overpowering, we're going to create a thick wash, which basically means there's a lot more oil paint and less thinner in comparison. I mean, there's a lot of it to cover a lot, but yeah. So essentially, we apply this all over the armor plates and the chitin all over the body. Then what we do is... 
Uh, after that's done, we do a quick wipe with a makeup sponge after it's dried, uh, solidified in, caked in. And then we are going to be a bit artsy. We're going to apply a bit of this here and there throughout the skin, the deep recesses and such, and then immediately wipe them away before they dry. And so adds a bit of color, more variation in there. And then towards the very end, we're going to apply another layer of the uh, oil wash onto, I don't know, the top part of his armor stuff, essentially. Alright, with Lamian Medium, Gulliman Flesh, Carrionberg Crimson, and Magos Purple, we're going to do uh, quite a lot of things. So, we're going to add uh, Lamian Medium with Gulliman Flesh to make it flow better, and we're going to apply around two ish coats onto his mouth and tentacles and stuff, but not the very tips and stuff. So, we want to be a bit cautious with it. Because we've diluted it with Lamian Medium, it's going to be thinner, so I do apply two coats here. I also apply it onto his joints, the thick ones, or the ones before the claws and stuff. I also apply Carrying Bird Crimson onto the joints once they've dried and such and such uh, all over, including onto his tentacles and his mouth. This is just to add some color. And then with Magos Purple, I apply it here and there on his... Uh, so how do I describe this? So I applied the Magos Purple on a little bit of his joints, the end parts before the claws. So I take Lamian Medium on one brush and I cover the back end of each of his arms. You'll see that. And then I take Magos Purple and I apply it on the other side. And essentially when the two washes meet, they naturally blend and so it goes from a strong color of Magos Purple back to the white color. So it's an interesting technique, but it uh, takes a bit of time to do. Now with Lamian Medium, Corn Red and Emperor's Children, we're going to make a wash. We're going to mix the Corn Red and Emperor's Children. I'm not sure what the ratio is, I just keep adding it until I got a nice color. Then I added Lamian Medium until it was thin enough and creating a, my own wash and I applied it all over the tentacles. And this was a more solid color. The other colors were a foundation and this was a good unifying wash. Worked really well. And then with Pallid Witch Flesh, I'm not going to dry brush, I'm going to overbrush, which is a bit similar, and I'm just going to overbrush over his skin and stuff to fix it, essentially. A highlight, raise some areas up, and yeah. And then at this point, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to assemble the model. Uh, part of the reason why I had to overbrush with the Pallid Witch Flesh was because uh, the stomach and stuff was getting, like, torn. Uh, like, the paint was chipping off from it resting. So it's like, you know what, I'm pretty much far past all this uh, issues of painting around corners and stuff, so I'll just assemble it in order to protect the paint job I've already done. Yeah, and so then I carefully attach all the legs. Alright, with Fenrisian Grey and Drakenhof Nightshade, we're going to paint, I don't know what these things are, but they're different colored on the uh, cover. So basically, paint them Fenrisian Grey, when they dry, apply pure Nightshade onto them. Then, when it's dried, uh, just paint straight lines along the edges of them and on the tips, and that's it. Alright, with Pallid Witch Flesh and this Pro Bold Titanium White, which I got from recommendations on one of the videos where I complained about crappy white paints. Um, so with Pallid Witch Flesh, I paint all his teeth and the 
horns on his tentacles. And then with the pure bold white, uh, titanium white, I painted his front teeth. And I was not prepared. This is actually a really good solid paint. There were no issues with it. Yeah. I'm going to take some Gloom and Flesh and apply it around his eyes and stuff to add shadow, because there doesn't seem to be any. With just Averland, I'd never get the chance to use Dorn. Essentially what happens is I apply it onto his eyes, uh, but the things are so small and so beady that I could not really fit any more Dorn yellow on top of the Averland, so I just left it as is. With Thondia Brown and Corn Red, essentially what happens is, uh, so his giant claws in the back, yeah, so I paint them with a base coat of Thondia, and then I add in a little bit of Corn Red into that, and I keep doing a few layers here and there, uh, adding it along the edges and towards the tip of the claws and stuff, and I just do some transitional colors here and there, and then I just paint some pure lines of it on the edges and the blade of his stuff, and yeah, simple, easy, done. Alright, with Celestia Grey, Lamian Medium, and Nightshade, Dragonov Nightshade, I paint the smoke coming out. So, base layer of Celestia Grey all over. Then, with Dragonov Nightshade hit with a little bit of Lamian Medium to help it flow better, I apply it all over the smoke. And then I just keep applying layers towards the bottom parts of the smoke, uh, with the model upside down so it doesn't flow onto the rest of the stuff. And so yeah, so it goes from dark to light to the tip. Alright, with Blood for the Blood God, I apply this to one of his tentacles and the broken arm that he has there. Also, I applied a base to him and he's, I painted the arm he's chewing on as a space wall and I'm applying the blood to that. So yeah. Alright, and now we varnish. So, interesting thing, the oil washes that I've applied onto his armor have this unique shine and sheen, but I want to keep that. So we're going to use the Army Painter Anti-Shine Matte Varnish, which is a lie, it actually does shine. I don't know why it says that. And then it's used for metals, to keep the shine of metals. I, I don't know what they're advertising it for. And AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish. So basically, all the armor plates and his tentacles and mouth, tongue, get the Anti-Shine Varnish. It'll protect it, but it will also keep this nice sheen that it has. Then with Ultra Matte Varnish, we're going to apply this to all his skin. And the combination looks good. The skin looks dead and lifeless, and his armor is shiny. And done. Um, hmm. Yeah, there's really not much to the Terranids. They're all kind of the same <laughs> once you have a color scheme associated with. Bases I'm not too good with. I don't know what it is, but I can't do a dirt base to save my life or this kind of base. I got some special rocks to apply to it, but it barely elevates it. So anyway, as for the model, uh, yeah, the uh, uh, varnishes really did a number on it. The skin looks great in comparison to its armor. Uh, the smoke also got the uh, matte varnish, or the ultra matte. Uh, yeah, so the model is very simple and easy to paint. Uh, the only thing that took time was, well, I, I actually wasn't able to paint almost at all last week, so I actually got very delayed with this, so it really didn't take too long. Uh, because of this, I'm thinking I'm probably just going to wrap up the Tyranids entirely in just like two videos. The big guys in one and all the small guys in another, because there really isn't much interesting painting diversity in this. The closest thing that this guy had was his mouth, that's the only thing unique about him, and the smoke clouds, but that was really nothing. And yeah, uh, apart from that, he's very simple, easy, he looks great. 
uh, for what he is. I didn't have much imagination for his belly, uh, chest, skin stuff because like I couldn't find any pictures on him. So I really had no idea what to do. I had no base inspiration. Actually, no, three videos for the Tyranids because I want to do something special with the Lictors. And uh, yeah, I'm. So here's the thing, I'm really tired of doing dirt bases, I just can't seem to do them. They look terrible in comparison to everything else. Normally I try to keep the scheme uh, similar to like the box sets and stuff, but I'm probably just going to stop doing that. It just, it isn't working. I can't seem to do dirt bases to save my life, so I'm just going to be dropping them off the cliff. Uh, at least this kind of dirt base. I have done some lush green dirt bases before, but uh, it's not fitting. Well, anyway, so like the video if you like the video, share if you want to share it, comment if you want to comment, and more to come hopefully sooner. I Hopefully I won't be as busy. Bye.